Hello again. Today we're going to be looking at a Unity UT210E. You may remember in the past I did a video where I modified this particular UT210E to add this analog output that will drive an oscilloscope. Looks identical to my original probe, except just new. It's the 30th of November 2016. One of the things I'm going to do is go over how to align one of these meters. The only thing I'd like to show with this meter is it has one problem, and that's that the analog bandwidth on this thing is about 5 kilohertz. That's the minus 3 dB point. And this meter here, I've actually changed this, so this has been updated to basically do about 100 kilohertz now. Okay, I've gone ahead and installed a couple of batteries. Let's just turn it on. See, it seems to power up just fine. Shows about 200 and... 22 milliamps of offset. Not that unusual. So you can see I've got the Bryman set in amps and it's attached to one of my bench supplies. So it looks pretty good. 179 versus 172. 1.549 versus 1.5573. So it looks like the meter's functional. Let's try it in another range. Again, about 200 milliamps of offset. And 151. There's a 3.48 versus 3.44. Basically 5 amps and 4.97. So the meter reads a little low, but it's certainly acceptable. So let's go ahead and take this thing apart and we'll see how this compares with our original meter. So just a quick glance at the meter. It definitely appears to be the same as my original one. I'm not too surprised about this. So I think what we're going to do next is solder in a battery pack so we can just leave the case of this off. And then what we'll do is try to align this. So you can see I've attached this small battery pack to the back. If you notice on the bottom side of the circuit board, there's two pads, and these are where I actually tack the two wires to for the positive and negative. And you can see I've also attached a couple of test points for the oscilloscope. This one is attached to R7. The other one is attached to ground, and by ground I don't mean the battery minus, I'm actually talking about the center bias point for the meter. Also on the bottom you notice that there's three potentiometers. There's a VR minus, and then a VR plus, and then VR4. VR minus is the offset adjustment, and then these two potentiometers are setting up the null for the two sensors up in the head. So the way I've been aligning these, I turn the meter on. I'll then set it to the DC current mode. And you can see as I rotate the meter, how the current's changing. So what I'll do is I'll adjust that null to get that to read as close as I can to zero as I'm rotating this. Of course, you don't want to have any ferrous or magnetic materials around this when you're doing that. So once I get that as close as I can to having no effect, I'll adjust this other trimmer, and that sets the offset, and then I can null this down to zero as close as possible. The problem first is we have to get rid of any residual magnetism. And the way that we do that is we use a degauss coil. So this is one that I had made. I showed this in a previous video, but I did not show it once it was completed. You can see there's quite a few coats of polyurethane on this. But it's essentially a coil. This is built up on some phenolic tube. You can see this just runs off the 120 volt standard AC line. There's a fuse in line with it, and on the inside there's a PTC that's in series with this switch. 
and then this light is across the coil. You basically install the probe into this area here, push the button, and this will put out a magnetic pulse that sits there and oscillates, and that will erase any kind of residual magnetism that's in the probe head. And after that, then we can go ahead and try to do the alignment. So again, if you're interested in seeing what this looks like on the inside, you can watch the other video. Again, right now you can see it's about uh, 240 milliamps high. We can see it took it down a little bit, but not all the way to zero. Again, the way I line the other meter, this basically reads zero. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and try to set these two trimmers. And again, I'm not going to do that on camera, but the way I do that is I rotate the meter and I'll adjust that again with a diddle stick. So we'll start with that adjustment and then we'll go ahead and adjust the offset. Okay, I've gone ahead and set all those trim pots. And you can see there's still some effect by rotating it. Of course, I got a lot of metal surfaces right here. But uh, it's a whole lot better than what it was. During one of my previous videos, I had modified my Tektronix current probe to increase the bandwidth from 50 to 100 megahertz. And one of the things I had to do was make this test fixture. And the clamp basically hooks around this post. And basically I would attach a 50 ohm load to the one side. And then I would drive it with an RF amp from the other. For these tests, I won't need to use anything like that. I just have this other adapter that I'd made. You can see this is set up on a small plane. It's a little transmission line here. You can see I have 200 ohm resistors in parallel. You can see I'm driving currently a square wave into this. And this is the output waveform. Currently it looks like the scope is measuring about 74 microseconds rise time on this. See the frequency is roughly uh, 2 kilohertz. That is correct. We're going to end up using a network analyzer though to measure the bandwidth of this particular probe. So let me go ahead and we'll hook that up. You can see our oscilloscope is attached again to the two test points in the back of the meter. I've got the network analyzer source attached to our small loop. And again our scope probe is attached to this buffer driver. And the output of this is going back into our network analyzer. You can see we're doing a linear sweep from 100 hertz to 10 kilohertz. And this is currently 1 dB per division. So if we move the cursor down to the 3 dB point, you can see this one is 4.159 kilohertz. Seems like the original probe was about 5.2 kilohertz. So this one isn't quite as good as the original one, but probably well with inside the margin of the meter. So again, the plan is to modify the meter to increase this bandwidth up to about 100 kilohertz. So what we'd be expecting to see is a flat line across the screen here, instead of this thing decaying like what it's doing. The seams of the jaws here are actually glued together. I haven't seen anybody who's actually taken one of these apart. After I went ahead and removed the clamp section here, I took a small X-Acto knife and I went along the seam and I was able to break the glue joint around this. Each of these core halves is made up of what I would believe is a silicon steel laminate. So these laminates are stacked together like what you would see as a standard E-core transformer. So the Kapton circuit board actually wraps around this half of the core. And then the sensors are located right at the two ends. These caps are actually press fit in. And these form the gap. Of course, they don't want this transformer to saturate. Uh, there's a small ground strap up in this area here, and that just routes to this little green wire. And then again, this just routes back to the ground. You can see up here I have a quad op amp. This is a TI part. It's a 4330. This is a chopper stabilized, zero offset, uh, typical instrumentation amp. Nice thing about this part is I think it runs down to like 1.8 volts. 
So if you're going to put a buffer in here or anything, uh, like what I've done, uh, this isn't actually too bad of an op amp to use for that. After I had this apart, I went ahead and traced out the circuit board. And this is the schematics for it, essentially. Uh, so you end up with uh, the two trim pots. And these are balancing the bridge for the two sensors. And then this just goes into a standard instrumentation amplifier configuration. Our R7 is sitting here, and this is where we are attaching our scope probe. And these are your gain selector resistors here. These are actually connected to the function switch here on the front. So as you select the 220 or 100 amp configuration, you're actually switching in which sets of resistors here to program the gain. Essentially the op amp is driven off of the battery. Uh, the negative side ties directly to the battery minus. The positive side goes through a switch and that switch is Q7 and then Q7 drives directly off of the V battery. For this next test you can see I have a small resistive load and I have a driver that I've built up and you can see I have my two clamps attached to the wire and over here this is my Tektronics probe. Let me just move the camera so you can get an idea of what's going on with the scope. The top trace in yellow is the output current monitor from my IGBT driver board. The second trace down in red is my Tektronics current probe. The blue trace is the Unity 210E that I've modified. And then the green trace at the bottom is the brand new probe here. So if I turn that off, again you can see there's nothing. Of course if I turn it back on we get a signal. If I break it, of course you're not going to get to see a signal. Or if I flip the polarity, you're going to see it go negative. Nothing real magic about any of this. Uh, but you can see our bandwidth again is pretty limited. This is the rise time of this probe compared to the Tektronics. You can see there's a pretty significant difference between the two. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn on the new probe. And we can see now the edge rates of this probe are significantly faster than our unmodified probe. Again, the pulse width of this is about uh, 200 microseconds. We can increase that. So I've cut the time in half and you can see the unmodified probe basically doesn't even have time to settle now. So let's go ahead and we'll hook up the new probe to the network analyzer and I'll show you what the frequency response is for it. So I've got our modified probe attached to our network analyzer and again the output coax from this attaches to our amplifier. And again, this is driving the 50 ohm input of the network analyzer. So again, the output from the network analyzer just attaches to our small current loop. And then the two cables are attached to the front end of the network analyzer. As you can see, I'm now sweeping from 100 hertz to 500 kilohertz. This is a log sweep. And this is currently 5 dB per division. I'll zoom out just a little bit. And we can see now the new modified probe is easily within 5 dB all the way up to 100 kilohertz. So let's just zoom in on this a little bit. We'll set our stop frequency to 100 kilohertz. Let's just change this to 1 dB per division. And you can see I'm well within 1 dB almost all the way up to 100 kilohertz. Let's just zoom in a little bit further. This is looking with uh, 0.2 dB per division. And we can go ahead and turn on the averaging function. Let me just go ahead and we'll zero the cursor. 
and we can see it roughly uh, 1.4 kilohertz it's uh, 0.8 DB down and then we see at 8.8 .8 kilohertz we are basically flat again within uh, 0.03 DB and then again at uh, about 39 kilohertz it attenuates to 0.84 dB and then it rises to 0.06 dB at 74.7 kilohertz and then as we work our way towards uh, 100 kilohertz here we're at uh, minus 1.56 dB down 100 kilohertz we are at uh, 2.13 dB down so hopefully this gives you some idea what can be done with a cheap current probe like the UT210E uh, I didn't spend a whole lot of money. I did spend quite a bit of time, obviously, to get this sorted out. Um, I probably made, I would say, maybe six revisions to this meter before I actually got it this good. Uh, so it wasn't a trivial job to pull this off. I've got a small circuit board located up in the head with the new circuitry. So it obviously it all fits up inside of that probe head. And I'm pretty happy with the results. I mean, this is definitely a huge improvement from our original 5 kilohertz or the new probe roughly 4 kilohertz with the 3 dB point. So if we plotted our original probe on here uh, we would be roughly in this area here would be down off of the screen over here so that's a pretty huge improvement for this probe. I'd like to take this time to welcome all you new members glad to have you on board hope you're enjoying the videos I think that's gonna be it for this video hope you enjoyed it till the next meter